Morning legends, it's an early morning start today at 6.30, about to start a one-on-one -on -one with a new client, so good to get it done first thing in the morning, he's got to work full time, so really committed from him to get up early, uh, get out of his comfort zone and get his session done before he gets off to work today. Fitness for the day done, absolutely cooked, just did a running session after my lesson. Eighteen minutes of work, but absolutely cooked. Just jogged for two minutes, so you had a comfortable pace, quite slow. Then sprint for one minute as hard as you can. Do that six times. No walking, no rest. Your rest is during the jogging. Six sprints, one minute each. Six two-minute jogs, 18 minutes of work. As you can see, I'm puffing, I'm sweating. It's taking it out of me and it's really good. Similar practice to a game, just that getting that repeatable effort and really got to hold on for those last couple of sets. Last couple of sets get tiring and sore and hard, but that's where your mental toughness comes in. That's where you build resilience. You go against the, the voice in your head saying, give up. It's going to be easier. Just stop. It's too hard. You've just got to fight through that voice and say, come on, you can do this. You've got to reinforce to yourself that you can do it. You've got to back yourself. And this is where... Once you get through it, you build mental toughness and you can, you can count on that in a, when the situation gets tough in a game. You don't just back down and say, all right, I'm gonna take the easy option. You dig in, you fight, might be late in the day, captain asks you to bowl another spell when you're cooked. Or when you're on 60, you think you've done your job, got to go on, kick on, win, get the winning runs for the team. You're beauty, very glad I did it. Now I don't have to do any fitness for the rest of the day. Here's tomorrow's wicket down here at Richardson Park where we're defending 95 at South Perth, four for 70. We came off early last week because of bad light. It was, a, it was a rainy, miserable day, nipped around all day. We got sent into bat. He's just put some water on it, which is good because it's going to be hot. Hold it together, but looks like it'll probably be a pretty good wicket tomorrow. He's rolled some grass clippings into it by the look of it, some dead grass clippings. So I'm sure it'll be pretty dead, pretty, pretty low, maybe slow. Um, but we've got to find a way to take six wickets for less than 25 to win the game. Otherwise, we've got to try and bowl them out as quickly as we can and bat for the rest of the day. Here's the groundsman putting some water on another wicket. There's our wicket for tomorrow. Here he is. He's obviously not giving it a big water. He's shaking it so that it's just a little bit of water on each part of the wicket. Just met Mrs. S for some lunch. Had a lovely burrito from Zambrero, so it was nice to get a bit of time away from work and spend some time with her um, and I may or may not have been very naughty and had half a bar or a bit more than half a bar of chocolate but it was the good stuff. Dark chocolate, yeah. Yeah, nice, really blow your hands through it. Okay, that's all right, so it's somewhere in between that and what you've been doing, so that one, you sort of flowed through it, but you collapsed off early. And normally you're so you're in here, so we sort of want to go from there through and then over. Not off too early. It's in between those two, you get that fluid swing. Yeah, lovely shot. Hey vlog, coaching finished for the evening. And I just wanted to um, show you or give you an example and a demo of something that I spoke to Andy in my coaching call last night. He was asking about ways of scoring against little dibbly dobblers, slow, medium um, bowlers that don't have a lot of pace, especially when there's a bit of a ring field and it's hard to sort of pierce the gaps and it's hard to use the pace to run it down. And I spoke to him about um, walking at the bowler, okay? So he's a, strong, he's a strong cover and puller. And I said to him, the theory of walking at the bowler isn't necessarily to smack him over the top, but what it actually does is that by getting down the wicket, it actually will make the bowler pull their length back a bit so it's a bit shorter. And then what he can do, once it's a bit shorter, then he can get back and he can cut and pull, which is his areas. So he's putting the pressure on the bowler and he's making them bowl in the areas he wants them to bowl. 
So for me, I, I like to walk at the bowler quite regularly, especially in white ball cricket. One day in 2020 cricket, it worked quite effectively for me um, a couple of weeks ago I got, when I got 60. I came early in my innings, there was a bowler hitting a really nice length, quite full, and I played and missed it a couple of times. He was swinging them and decking them. And, so I thought to myself, okay, I don't want him to keep bowling there. If he keeps bowling there, it's dangerous for me as a batter. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to put him under pressure and get sort of the, the game on my turn. So what I did is I started to walk at him and then get closer to his length. And what he did, he actually, rather than going shorter, he went straighter. And I was able to then work him through the leg side for a few runs. And because I was down the wicket, I was taking out LBW. So there's a few few ways to get down the wicket. One is you sort of skip down like it's like a spinner and you, and you sort of really get a lot of momentum. And I generally do that in 2020 cricket when I'm trying to hit straight. I'm trying to get momentum into the shot and I dance down at them. But for me, the most effective way of, of walking and getting at the length of a pace bowler is what Matty Hayden used to do. And that's just taken sort of, my first step is um, with my right foot. And then the idea is that as my second um, step, as my front foot lands, I'm in a hitting position. So I'll do that demo again. So I'm in my crease, I'm in my stance, bowlers loading up. I generally do it when the bowlers sort of started their load up and they're coming round. So I don't mind if they see me. If they see me, they're gonna change something. If they don't see me, it means they're bowling a full length, they're bowling the same length and I can possibly drive or get some runs away. So it's, it's here, so I'm going forward and then they're bowling and I'm adjusting to where the ball is. If it's there or if it's outside off, I'm going forward and then bang. Sometimes I let it go or I defend it, I go bang and then it's a good length still and I let it go, it passes through to the keeper. Or I go, Bang, it's a good ball and I'm just defending it. But I'm putting the bowler back under pressure. I'm not letting him just bowl six balls in a good area. So give it a try. Just play around with it. You've got to be careful you're not going across too much because that's when you're opening your stumps up. You want to sort of go down the wicket and it's the timing's got to be right. You want to sort of, you don't want to land that and then have to make another movement. For me, I want it just to be nice and simple. Bang, and then if they drop short, then I can pull it from there. That's what Hayden used to do so well. He used to walk at them, and then he'd want them to drop short because he was such a big, powerful guy. He'd sort of pull off the front foot, and he'd hurt so many bowlers who dropped short. So give it a try. If the keeper's up to the stumps, obviously it's not a great idea because you miss it, you're out. But if the keeper's back and you've got someone hitting a good length, it does, like I say, it doesn't have to be an aggressive shot. It's just a way to just put the bowler off their length. So give that a go and let me know how you go with it. Home for some pizza and red wine Domino's with the wife. Domino's is the best. Our Friday night uh, ritual, we just, when I get in from coaching, we generally like to have a little bit of pizza and treat ourselves in a glass or two of red just to relax and enjoy each other's company. So signing off for another day. Hope you've enjoyed today's vlog. Get me out. Game day tomorrow, so I'm just relaxing tonight, taking it easy, and then uh, looking forward to the challenge tomorrow. Hopefully we get these six wickets quickly and then have another hit and bat all day. But uh, if you haven't already, please like and comment um, below and subscribe to our channel. Share it with your friends. The more people that watch it, the better. Um, my name is Tom Scully. This is Skull Stories, and I'll see you again soon, legends.